Hai me whakahaere we nei kōrero oku ki rotu i tō tātou reo Māori. A e te iwi, koutou ngā uri a hāpai, a apa hāpai taketake ko tatu mai ki te upoko te ika te ngā koutou katoa. Pēnei me tātaku whanau ngā hone harawere e kōrero nei ngā maramara kura haupo, he kura haupo i roto i tō koutou rohe, he kura haupo noki i roto i tō ku rohe, no te putanga mai o kura haupo, ka tahi ka pākaru karu hia ki rangi tā hua hua, Nā, ka whakatika ngia, ka whakatere ngia tonu tia ki wāinga tonu i a mātou, ki muri whenua, ka kitea ko ngā rākau e pūana, ko te hango o e ngā rākau i te takutai, he kura, he whero. Kā tahi ka tangotango hia ngā huruhuru tapu, i utaina ki rungi tō tāua waka mai te motu a enua kura, i roto i te moana nui a kiua, kā tahi ka piua ki ngā kare o te wai, no te putanga, tatanga, unga mai ki uta, kā tahi ka kitea, Ko ngā rākau, he kura, he whero, e pōhiri mai ana ki o tātou tūpuna, ki a tae mai ki Aotearo. Nā me pēnā rawa te kōrero mō o tātou nei taketake e hoki ana ki te āpohātu mō atu. Nā e pēnā ko te katoa. Sir, I stand with my colleagues and welcome the members of Ngāti Apa here today. And observe that they give as their historical roots set from Apa. Hapai take take, and also serve find great strength and meaning in uh, their their proverbs and their sayings, and also repeat what I observed recently. There is a Ngati Upper in the South Island as well, and there is a Ngati Upper whose name is etched in the pages of history because it was they who took the original claim as to whether or not there are residual rights belonging to Māori in the seabed in Foreshore. So small, small though their numerical strength may be, large is the shadow on the activities of politicians that the name of their tribe casts. And perhaps that's why they have inherited the same upper wet wet apakitakiritangopiata as referred to by Minister Tūia. Uh, so this claim is a further step along what's proving to be a protracted process. However, the current minister and colleagues in the Māori Party are advancing the issue of Māori claims towards its inevitable historical conclusion. But every claim that's settled requires a new cluster of skills. And I acknowledge the younger people that have also arrived here, because we, sir, as Māori, must not be like that Japanese soldier from World War II, who, when they discovered him in the jungles of the Philippines, 25, 35 years later, it was a matter of ignorance to him that the Second World War had stopped. And it's important, sir, that we don't repeat the errors of that lost soldier fighting wars and fighting battles that the world has moved on from. So these settlements, sir, as we address them, pass them into law, require a new level of engagement and a new set of skills. Because once the, the, the capital is restored to the iwi, then each generation needs to grow it. Each generation needs to ensure that it contributes to the overall development of the country because it's only served by avoiding the trap of Māori believing that they can be an island unto themselves, that we will ensure that the legacy grows. So it's a, yeah, it's a solemn day in a sense, because many of the people that we knew of are no longer here. And so this group of Māori, this tribe, Ngāti Apa, as Minister Turia has said, have a proud heritage. They are the people, amongst other things, that have produced the Kuya Matakite, Mererikiriki, who, sir, laid her mana upon the prophet, Wurumu Tahu Portiki Ratana, and indeed there was some discussion, if my history serves me correctly, that another promising young man, Rangi Mahwete, may actually inherit her mantle. He, sir, ended up in the Legislative Council in this House and played a key role marrying the vision of the Māori of Ngāti Apa and other kura haupō waka associated with the Ratana Church and the Labour Party. 
That was his contribution, sir, not only to his own people from Ngāti Upper and Rangitāne, but to the affairs of this House. So I mention their names because they're so easily forgotten, and the names of such powerful figures in our Māori history, which have influenced our overall New Zealand history, must not be obscured on a day like this. So, when we go forward with these settlements, it's pleasing to see that the names of the areas are slowly being restored. And I, in doing some background research, sir, learnt that the name Martin was where uh, James Cook originally came from. And uh, it came as an utter surprise to me, but I was in a, uh, a, a fits of laughter, because recently, sir, I was in the township of Martin, um, visiting uh, a daughter who goes to school up there, only to hear some of the local Māori telling me the original name of the place was Tūtai Nui. I've yet to ascertain whether or not that's actually correct. <laughs> but when I do hear Simon Power in the future testing my patience, I will explain to him, sir, in another speech, that Tūtai Nui is an appropriate appellation if that's the quality of his contribution. <laughs> <clears throat> so, sir, we should ensure that days like this are a chance for us as proxies for ordinary New Zealand men and women to say that we're prepared to embrace these small but important episodes. Now, it's easy, as I've said in earlier speeches, sir, to say this is giving too much away, this is not enough, but I repeat again, unless we can capture and sustain legitimacy through taking people with us and ensuring, sir, that these settlements cause the ordinary New Zealand taxpayer to by and large believe that it's making a better country for our children and grandchildren. No runanga, sir, no parliament through fiat can actually command how we as New Zealanders think about each other. That's almost a matter of faith and goodwill. And sir, I'm confident that underneath the settlement, when you take away all the ebb and flow of anger and hurt and dealing with the bureaucracy and indifferent ministers, etc., that there remains the bedrock feelings of willingness to compromise, willingness to join together and create something bigger than our own sense of entitlement or our own sense of anger. And that's the deeper thing, sir. I hope that all of us as parliamentarians, with whatever tribe that comes here, pass on to our children. Because, sir, the settlements are only a stepping stone. If we want to address the deficit in investment, the deficit in jobs, encourage firms, sir, we need to ensure that we plumb the depths and make a commitment to turn these settlements into flourishing enterprises. But ensure that the people who are entitled to benefit from the fruits actually do so. And there's one thing, sir, that I'm not entirely comfortable with when I hear a number of our, our relations saying, oh, this has got nothing to do with the iwi, it's an Article 3, or it's an Article 1. Sir, these are iwi settlements. Iwi means people. And wherever an iwi finds its people, it ought to not only be engaging with them, but ensuring that the resources associated with this settlement and the ongoing high-quality relationship, hopefully, with the Crown is dedicated to improving the prospects of the people. Because as that famous Māori proverb says, sir, pluck forth the tender shoot of the flax bush. You will hear the bellbird cry. What does it say? It says the greatest gift of all is humanity, humanity, humanity. Huia te rite o te harakeke, kei hea te kou makoe kou. Māwe ui mai kiao, hea hate mea pai, makoe ki atu, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. This today, sir, is an opportunity for us to celebrate with Ngāti Apa, and encourage them to take this to the next stage. But at all times, remember, it's people, sir, that we need to bring with us as we advance the Māori agenda and the treaty settlement agenda. Kia ora tātou katoa.